Chairman Fraser. Present. Vice Chair Atkinson. Here. Secretary Johnston. Here. Representative Moore. Representative Barrows. Representative Bennett. Here. Representative Costantino. Here. Representative Coughlin. Here. Representative Philippi. Here. Representative Fogarty. Here. Representative Kern. Here. Representative Lima. Here. Representative Maldonado. Here. Representative Marshall. Representative McEntee. Here. Representative Price. That completes the attendance you have upon. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, welcome, House Committee on Municipal Government, uh, Thursday, January 21st, 2016. We have two bills to be heard tonight. Uh, they are for hearing and consideration. Do I have a motion to hold all bills for the study? So so moved. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Okay, do you want to go? Sure. Okay, first bill. Uh, we have. Uh, Oh, there he is. Jesus. <laughs> Behind me. Uh, sneaking up on it. Okay, uh, first bill, 7065, uh, sponsored by Representative Langio, Animal, Animal Husbandry. I understand, uh, uh, Representative, that there's some issues on a sub A? Or? Yes, and okay. I'm working on currently DEM had an issue uh, in reference to uh, overseeing who would oversee it. And um, I think there were some issues with one of the unions relating to um, whether someone be grandfathered in on the cost, and I'm addressing all of those issues okay. to make DEM happy and hopefully make the unions happy as well. But the basic genesis of the bill is, we heard the bill last year, that animal control officers have some type of training in reference to animal behavior. You know, they love the breeds, when a dog's happy, when a dog's happy, sad, <clears throat> so on and so forth. Right now, they don't require any training whatsoever. Okay. Any questions of Representative Fletcher? <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first witness is uh, Jim Centerini, Rhode Island Council, A4, AFSCMH. <coughs> Thank you so much, Chairman, <coughs> members of the page, Jim Centerini, Rhode Island Council, 94. Uh, Right now, as written, we have to log opposition to the bill. However, I did have a conversation with Representative Palangio, uh, and if uh, certain provisions are made, uh, I would tell you that I will bring it back to my members, and I think they may be amenable to the legislation. Our objections to this legislation is we do not support animal cruelty. We are not against the enforcement of rules and regs that protect animals. What we are against and what we have to be careful of is that when professional certifications are put in statute, uh, that long-term employees who may have been doing the job in 20 years in towns like, well, let me just name them that I know off the top of my head, uh, South Kingstown, Narragansett, Pawtucket, Woonsocket, I don't have any fossils, they're not mine, I don't think okay. they're not mine, uh, but they could probably live another year. So they, we've had individuals who have been doing this work for many years, and to get the certification, which this certification looks kind of detailed and probably is very expensive, may be challenging for those individuals who are highly qualified but may not be technologically adept. Uh, so that's one thing. So when I've encountered this before. One suggestion is the consideration of a grandfather or grandmother provision, which actually this General Assembly has done many times when job qualifications are added in um, through statute. The second thing, though, that I'd like to point out is where this statute leaves uh, a bit of vagueness is who pays for the certification. And while it's easy to say, um, for example, when the teacher assistant issue was running hot several years ago, Jim Parisi, who's from the AFT and I, successfully secured language uh, working with the committee uh, that at least the cost of two tests were paid for, and I think even a prep course, I've got to go back and look at the bill. But we negotiated those parameters into the legislation, and right now what I'd be worried about is while my animal control officers have some law enforcement powers, uh, and have a dangerous job, and, and Narragansett, I know, carries is weapons qualified and carries a firearm, uh, they do not have the compensation levels or protections similar to police. So they do not make a lot of money. And what I'd be concerned about is, depending on the cost of the certification, which I will say I don't know what it is, is all of a sudden just added on into the performance of their job. So those are our two major concerns. I had a very productive uh, conversation with Rep. Colangio, and I'm more than willing to work with him on the list. <laughs> Any questions from the center? 
Yeah, just a quick yes. question, Mr. Chairman. Sure. So the grandfathered uh, in employees, what, what would that consist of? Somebody that works 10 years? That's really, years, your, years? that's really your prerogative as a committee, and I don't have a number stuck in my mind. But for instance, in the wastewater issue that I had worked on for many years, um, I kept on asking for a grandmother, grandmother, and I can't even remember where we ended up, but we ended up finally agreeing with one because they kept on ignoring our complaints, so we kept on opposing the bill. And I, I can't even remember. I'd have to go back and look and see. I mean, generally, it's to honor long-term employees. You know, I, I would just hesitantly say it can be anywhere between over 10 or 15 to 20 years. It just depends. I can be flexible on that. I have to look at my membership profile before I uh, give you a firm number. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Yes. Uh, yeah, Jim, do you know if these, um, if this kind of course, these kind of courses are available for someone to take? I mean, the, the concern that was brought to me originally by the, the by Pawtucket, actually, animal control officers, was that at the time when I researched this, and I don't have that research with me, was that NACA was known as a, as a really good entity, but there was some confusion about why this organization was picked versus other organizations. And so I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I do know that there is, that, that the rep is right, there's no standardized training. I think there is different levels of requirements in cities and towns. Like I know that the Narragansett job spec is actually pretty detailed and rigorous because that's one of my locals. Um, so I, I think it kind of ranges, and I understand that the rep's uh, objective is to standardize it. But would I tell you that I know a lot about NACA? The answer is no. I pulled up their website and looked at it quickly, and that was it. So I, I don't know that someone here from SPCA or would probably have more details about the National Organization. I just want to. Any further questions? Thank you. Uh, Joe Marzino from DEM. Is it Marzino? Marzino. Marzino. Welcome, Joe. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, so just want to let you know that DEM at this time, we are not taking a position on the bill. We are working with the representative to address some concerns and amend the language to ensure that it does result in the proper certification of our animal control officers. And we will be happy to address any questions and concerns uh, once the new bill is introduced. Great, thanks. I assume there's no questions from the committee. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Uh, Joe Wazika, Rhode Island SPCA. If I recognize him, members of the committee, from his frequent appearance on television and the news. Good evening, Chairman Welcome Kramer. Welcome Hollywood. <laughs> Good evening, members of the committee. Um, I think I can answer some of the concerns that were brought up. Um, the, the SPCA supports the concept of the bill, 110% behind the mandatory training. Uh, we have some issues with the language, which Representative Palangio spoke about, that we're working on, so I, I won't get into details about that unless anyone would like me to. Um, but some of the issues that were brought up, one being cost. I can talk about cost. The cost for the certification, there are two modules that have to be completed. They're each 40 hours. It's $525 per module. So $1,050 to certify an animal control officer, which in my opinion is not a lot of money. Um, availability. They will come to Rhode Island um, once a year. They came last year to, to uh, complete Module A, and they're coming back this year to complete Module B. So I don't think availability is going to be an issue, so there would be no travel, lodging expenses involved in getting the certification. Um, the grandfathering in, I, I, I have a problem with them, and I would like to say why I'm not picking on any particular municipality, but I heard someone say Foster. Um, the animal control officer in Foster has been around for quite some time, and, and he, he does a fine job, but I will tell you that the police chief calls me every week asking for input, suggestions. He wants training for his police officers because he recognizes that his animal control officer may not be up to date on the current requirements for an animal control officer. Times have changed. Um, it is a unique job. It's different than being a police officer. Um, it, it, it's a dangerous job, and I think regardless of how long someone has been on the job, I would certainly argue that they, they also be required to be certified. And just from a liability standpoint, I would think any municipality 
that's going to put an officer on the road um, in a public position, in a, in a dangerous position, would want to say, my officer has been certified. Um, so those are the things that would concern me about the grandfathering. Um, but we're 100% behind the training. Uh, I'm hoping we can work out some language that's agreeable to everybody. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody has. Any questions of Joe? Thanks, Joe. Okay, thank you very much. Pat Maxwell? That's the Cranston Animal Control Officer. <clears throat> yeah, Pat Max, we've been in the animal control for 33 years yeah. um, and very active in animal control and uh, legislation. And I've attended um, many certifications. Uh, I'm fortunate, and a lot of other cities and towns are fortunate, that they do have a training budget of up to, say, two to $3,000 in their training budget. It, a lot of times it's not utilized, but the money is there and it can be put in. It's a very small amount when you think of the training that you get. And it is about time that animal control becomes more uniform, just like the police officers are, DEM, instead of being fragmented, you're nationally certified. Uh, NACA did a study uh, several years ago where animal control officers make a public contact four times as often as a police officer. So for every one call, a cop goes out on, an animal control officer goes out on four. We have four times the amount of exposure to the public, with animals, Therefore, we have four times the liability to the cities and towns. Therefore, the cities and towns should tra train. So an, un an untrained person is a liability. Um, as far as the cost, uh, yeah, five and a quarter, I don't want to be repetitive, but it's five and a quarter. I did bring a packet with all the changes. NACA has now merged with um, Code 3, the Cruelty Investigation School, and Joe and I were big proponents of this. Uh, it's now called NACHO. Uh, so it's the National Animal Control and Humane Officer Academy. And I brought the programs from last year and this year, all throughout the country that you can look at. Uh, some of them are on the East Coast. Airfare is not that cheap. Some of them you can drive to. Um, if you could just pass them down, uh, well, it's one year of each. And, and if you can, like Connecticut, uh, I'm certified. So in, in Connecticut, I did one, in Albany. Yeah, you can drive to them. You know, uh, the hotel is a, yeah, if you want, that way you can look and you can research it yourself online and see what's in the program. I made a couple of copies of what's included in the training, Module A. Um, you know, I can, I'll, I'll get them to everybody later, but in Module A, all the information and training that's covered in Module A and B and C, uh, and the weapons, what I want to address. Uh, I don't think we need weapons if that's taken out. You know, NACA doesn't even offer training in weaponry. Uh, we do use chemical capture, uh, but I think in Rhode Island law, we're not allowed to use tranquilizers. Right, Joe? We can't. No, as far as the, the guns and weapons, there's really no need for us. We have our police officers to practice if it's a dangerous call. And as far as certification for um, chemical capture, the possession of a controlled substance or needles and syringes doesn't allow us. So there's some things in the language, uh, you know, that we're willing to work with. We can get some of those out. Even the term NACA, NACA has changed. NACA is merged. So their certification has a whole new name. And um, the grandfather clauses is, is okay. People have been around a long time, like me. But um, in, in maybe in a short period of time, maybe a year, they could get some training, you know. Uh, and again, we're thinking this is down the line, too. It's not just me. I'll be retired in a few years. A lot of the old folks, like jo Johnny, Hunt, he's gone. Um, but the, up the new people coming in, it's been down, too, into the cities and towns and the animals. Thank you. Speaker Lee, do you have a question? No, I just a comment. I wanted to welcome uh, Pat Maxwell from Cranston. She's a fantastic animal control officer. And thank you for all the help you give our furry little friends. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the State House. I want that good job. Thanks, Pat. Any, further, any more questions of Pat? Okay, that concludes testimony on House Bill 7065. We'll move to House Bill 7017, sponsored by. Representative Chippendale, the great state of uh, Foster. And huh? Huh? I, I always call We tried to become a state once, but it worked out. It worked out.
Good evening, colleagues. It's the place where you don't have to go to school with the snow. On the That's ground. correct. Absolutely. We all want to live there. So, right. so before you, um, you have a bill that was requested by my uh, town council in Foster, and uh, there's a little twist to it, which I'll get to after. But um, I did give to the chairman a copy of the resolution from the Foster Town Council as well as just a little explanation. Essentially, uh, the town of Foster hasn't changed their licensing fees for dogs in, uh, I think, since like 1974 or 73. Um, they don't have, at this point, an immediate need, they feel, to, to, to increase the fee, uh, but want to uh, make it possible for them to do that um, if they feel the need. And so they've added a section, which is page three, lines 17 through 21, um, which, which just, uh, as we'll see with some of the other towns, it allows them, it allows the town of Foster to charge up to $15 for, for a dog license. Um, and it also allows them uh, to, uh, to find violators $25. So it's in accordance with uh, pretty much the other towns I didn't see anything terribly offensive in it, and uh, and at their request, I did submit it, and I urge uh, consideration by this uh, committee for passage. Um, I would be happy to take questions on that before I talk about the weird thing. Any questions? No questions. Pretty straightforward, right? Okay. So um, I was approached on the floor um, by a representative of a, of a company that is endeavoring at some point in the future with Rhode Island cities and towns to enable the cities and towns to issue dog licenses online. So folks could get up, much like we register our cars now, you can get up online and do it. Uh, right now, no, none of our towns or cities are able to do that, and there's a variety of reasons, as it was explained to me. So on page one, uh, they are seeking a change on line four, where right after the word where it says May 1, effective May 1, they want to change in the office of City of Town Clerk to the, to the word through the office of the City of Town Clerk. And again, that reason is, is purely um, technical in nature because, of course, in the office physically means you would be within the four walls, and if you're doing it online, you don't need to be within the four walls of your town hall, you can do it through the office. So it's a technical change. Um, I did speak with the chair prior uh, to this hearing, and, um, and I'm going to seek a sub A for that. And, and also, uh, I would ask that the committee consider that. I do wish to make this distinction. If the committee is not inclined to pass this, uh, due to this change of in to through, but would otherwise be inclined to pass it, then I'll separate these because I have to put my town's interests above those of, 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 this, of the folks who reached out to me. So I just wanted to put that out there. Um, I'm, I'm, again, more than happy to answer any questions about this incredibly detailed bill. Rep. Chippendale, I'm sure, if, given the premise or preface of your concerns, if any of us had a problem with it, we'd probably tell you right now. So Excellent. if you don't hear it now, then you'll think it's okay. Fantastic. To, uh, sub A come back uh, for okay. consideration. I appreciate it. Okay. Any questions, of Representative Chippendale? Thank you all very, Thank very much. much. That concludes testimony on House 7017. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 aye.